Okay guys, I'm so I'm gonna show you guys how you guys are gonna make your advanced ray casting combat system. So first off, we're gonna make three dummies out of the workspace. Uh, you can you, you can just go to uh, plugins. You can just do dead ray R6, put a block away. Or you can just go to your toolbox. You can just add a uh, a dummy inside of here. So you can test out the damage. Uh, something else you could do. Uh, something else I need you guys to do for this combat system is to make a folder inside replicated storage and put your five animations that you're going to be using for this combat system so you have hit one two three four and five so and we're going to have our remote event remember this is our remote event so we're going to make this remote event to refer to the server so we can make everybody see your animations and make the damage visible to everyone and the next thing that i want you guys to do is you're going to make a local script inside uh start a character scripts and what i want you guys to do is that we're gonna we're gonna get user input service and then we're going to get replicated storage right so if we're using this so we can make sure that uh the service is going to run perfectly fine we're not going to get no errors if we should make sure we did everything right so if if user input dot input begins so we're going to tie the one tie an event to the user input service and we'll connect the function and we're going to input and we're going to put uh input and is typing instead of the parameters right now if is typing then return n so if the player is typing it's going to return n so if you're typing and you click by accident your m1 will not activate so if input dot user input type equals enum dot user input type dot mouse button one, then uh, replicate storage dot event fire server. So we're gonna go. So basically, replicate storage dot event is gonna fire server. And whenever we put in this parameter, it's gonna fire as well. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna fire every time we click. It's gonna go to the server side. So now all our all our stuff will be inside the server side. Now uh, all we're gonna do here, we're gonna make a server script and we're gonna call it combat right. And now inside of here, it might look a lot. It might look like a lot of work, but I'm gonna explain it all down to you and how it can be, how how it's gonna be super simple. I promise, it's super simple, right? So first, we're gonna get replicate storage, and we're gonna get we're gonna make a debunk to table, right? And we're gonna make combo a table because uh, you have to do uh, you have to, if you wanna get a debunk to work on the server side, you gotta do it a certain way, right? So now. You usually don't see this in like a lot of scripts, but this is I'm gonna use it for here because I want you guys to learn a lot from here. So we're gonna do if player dot character dot humanoid gets state equals equals enum dot humanoid state type dot freefall, then return n. Remember this is outside of the debunk, so it doesn't affect the debunk and stop forever, right? So what we're doing here is that we're basically making sure that if the if the player is in the air and they're coming down, they try to click, they will the M1 will not work and it will just not it will just not fire at all, right? So if debounce player, so all we're doing, we're putting player inside the debounce table, then return end, so it's gonna stop. That's gonna be equal to true. So uh, we're gonna make our debounce play equal to true. So we're just making our debounce. And we're doing if not player, if not combo player, so if not combo player, then combo player equals zero. So now we're making our combo player a number. We can easily just do combo equals zero, but we're just making a table so we can make it so I can make it super efficient for you guys. So now we're making, we're gonna get our character. So player dot character. We're gonna get a humanoid. It's character dot humanoid. And now we're gonna do combo player plus equals one. So every time this script is run, it's the uh, combo player is gonna start from zero. It's gonna equal. It's gonna be equal to one. Then when it comes again, it's gonna be equal to two. It's gonna be equal to three, and etc. So now all we're gonna do here, right? We're gonna we're basically gonna get all our animations that we made, right? We're gonna look at all the animations. So we're gonna humanoid. So the humanoid that we made here from our, our variable load animation with the semicolons and inside the parameters when you do uh, load animation we're gonna do we're gonna uh, locate which animation we want to go first so that's why I put in order so hit one would be equal to hit one right here hit two hit three and etc right so basically I located all the hits I wanted to be in here and I made sure it correspond with the variable so it looks nice and organized so for our next one now we're gonna make our v1 table and for this v1 table, uh, it's going to be super important for the rest of the scripts to make sure that we can change the player's speed. And now we're going to make a variable for our eyes. So we can put so uh, so we can just have this here, and we can like minimize the lines, and so it can like not look like so it cannot extend across too much for you guys. So all we're doing is we're all we're doing right here is just getting like where the character is uh, looking from. And now we're going to make our variable called distance and distance is going to be equal to 4.5 and now we're going to make uh, now we're going to make another one called lo uh, local general wait time and our uh, general wait time is going to be like how long we want uh, 
how long you want each combo to punch for. So if you punch one, we're going to wait 0.4 seconds. If we punch another one, we're going to wait 0.4 seconds again. And I'm going to explain distance again. Uh, distance is going to be uh, 4.5 studs in front of the, uh, the character. And now overall wait time is that when they're done with their whole M5 or the whole M4, however long you want, but we're doing an M5 in this video, is that they're going to wait 2.1 seconds before they can do anything else. So now in here, right, we're going to make our local Raycast para, para, well, that's how I named it, right? We're going to make it equal to Raycast Params.new. And what we're going to do here, we're going to make, so what we're doing in these three lines right here, we're trying to make sure that when we click, it doesn't punch us at all, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to do Raycast para dot filter descendants instance is equal to, we made a little uh, curly brackets, and we put player dot character. So the characters, uh, so it's not gonna, so it's gonna ignore us, right? And we're gonna blacklist it. So that's why we did. That's why we made the filter type equal to enum dot raycast filter type dot blacklist. So it's gonna blacklist us, and it won't affect us when we click, so we don't take damage, right? Now here, cause this is the most one of the most important parts of this whole script here, right? So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna do local. So we're gonna do, we're gonna make a variable called raycast hitbox equals workspace raycast, right? Semicolon raycast. And what we're gonna do inside of here, we're gonna make uh, it's gonna uh, we're gonna put parentheses, right? And then we're gonna put another parentheses because we wanna make we wanna change the C frame to position, right? So it can be more accurate. So we're gonna do character human root part C frame, right? So now we have the C frame of the human root part, and now we're changing it to the position because when you're in ray casting, the two parameters is you're gonna position the ray and then you're gonna make the ray. So now we position the ray at our, at our human root part. So we're basically, we basically position the ray at wherever we're at in the map, right? So if we go like, like under the world, you know what I'm saying? We're still there. If we're like on top of the world, we're still there. Like we're, all we're doing is positioning the human root part, right? And now, this might be the, a little bit more confusing part, but now we're gonna make our eyes. And for our eyes, all we're doing is character.humanrootpart.cframe.look vector, right? And for this look vector, all we're doing is we're going to check anything that's in front of us, right? So, what we're doing, well, we didn't make, no, we didn't, like, multiply by anything else right now. So, if we multiply by, like, 100, it's going to look 100 stuff in front of the player. So, to make this more accurate, uh, I made sure I multiplied it by, five multiplied by 4.5. And then, so basically, it's going to check 4.5 stuff in front of the player. Just to check if they're in front of there. And so, it's not going to look behind them or, like, to the side of them. And now we're going to make our, our Raycast Para. So for this Raycast Para, what we're going to do here is that we are going to basically make our blacklist so it actually doesn't hit us, right? So we're just going to put it inside our, our next, um, our next, uh, our variable. So now we basically made our little hitbox, right? We positioned it, we made the ray, we made our blacklist so it doesn't hit us, right? So now we're going to make our local function called speed, right? So we made it local function so it can basically make the whoever's getting hit speed is equal to zero. So raycast.instance, ray, ray hitbox.instance, right? So that instance is basically going to find an instance of whatever is hit, whatever is in the ray. So dot parent, we're going to get the parent of whatever the instance is and we're going to make it find the human wood. And then we're going to change the walk speed to zero. And now we're going to change the jump, the jump power to zero so you also can jump while getting punched. So now, now we're gonna make our local hitbox variable, right? So every time we're making our M1, we can just fire this uh, function, and it can check uh, if the if um, there's a human in front of us, so we, they can take damage and like do this other stuff, right? So now if if Raycast hitbox, then so if if it finds so if there's something if, if there's something in the ray, right? If there's something in the ray, then we're gonna say if ray dot instance, right? And if ray but if ray hitbox dot instance dot parent find first child humanoid so if this uh ray hitbox finds a humanoid then if combo player equals equals five right so we make combo player equal equals zero right so when the player clicks like five times this is gonna fire and it's gonna do local bv so we're gonna make body velocity and we're gonna parent this body velocity to the humanoid root part so raycast dot instant dot parent find first child humanoid root part and then right after that what we're gonna do we're gonna do bv dot max force because now we're going to uh, set our body velocity so we can knock the player back. We're going to do back at 3.new, we're going to put math.huge, math.huge, math.huge three times, right? You can customize it however you want, but I just put math.huge. So now we're going to set our velocity. Velocity is probably the most important part for the knockback. So we're going to do player.character.humanrootpart.cframe.look vector times 40, right? So the times 40 is basically how fast they're going to go, right? 
And uh, for the play, so all we're doing is that wherever we're facing, the player is going to get knocked back in that direction. So if the if the player that's getting hit is in front of us, and we punch them on the side, they're going to move to. They're going to get knocked back from. They're going to get uh, knocked back from the side. And then every 0.5 seconds, we're going to re uh, we're going to remove this body velocity so they don't keep, uh, keep going knocked back forever, right? And then we're going to fire the speed function so we can change their speed. And now. We're gonna do else. So if combo player is not equal to five, so basically when it when a combo player equals one, two, three, and four, we're gonna make we're gonna insert uh, the humanoid that that's in the ray into the v1 table, and then we're gonna make the, the first value in the table, and the first value inside the table is ray hitbox dot instant dot. So basically, the first value inside the v1 table is the humanoid. I'm gonna make them take five damage, right? So we're making the humanoid take five damage. We're going to fire the speed function again because we want the, the player's walk speed and jump power to be equal to zero. So basically, we're going to end off. We're going to end that off there, right? So we basically have our hitbox now, and now we're going to go to now we're going to go to the most important part to start this all, right? So now we're going to do if combo play equals equals one, then we're going to play our first animation, and then we're going to fire the hitbox uh, function so we can check if there's anything inside the so we can, so we can check if there's a humanoid. And then we can do uh then we can make them take damage and like like get them like, like let them get knocked back and all that. Then we're gonna make them wait our general time, so 0.4. So all we're gonna do we're gonna do this for the rest of uh one through four and also five. So we made uh animation two run the function with general time three, four, and, and when we get the five right, five changes up a little bit, right? So we still play the uh, animation for five, we still run the hitbox uh function, and we this time we wait overall time, right? Because this is our last this is our last uh at M5, right? Our, our last M1. So we're gonna make them wait 2.1 seconds, right? And then we're gonna reset combo play equal to zero. And you're probably thinking, why not set combo play equal to one? And because, right? Because we set combo play equal to zero, right? And we did combo player plus equals one. So basically, whatever combo player is is gonna be equal. It's gonna add one to it. So since it's zero, we're gonna add one to zero, and it's gonna be equal to one. So that's why we're setting it equal to zero. So it's gonna be added to one when the script is coming down. So this will be equal to one. So it's gonna reset the combat, right? So basically, yeah, that's how you get your little punches in and you make sure that your player can take damage. And now you're probably thinking like, how am I gonna reset the, the, uh, the player's walk speed, right? So first we're gonna start down here before we go up here. So we could table that remove. We're gonna do, we're gonna remove the first value inside of the V1 table. So whatever, so whatever is inside the, uh, the V1 table in here. So basically the human, if the, if the uh, game finds like the the first value inside V1 that'll be the humor, it's gonna remove it. Then we're gonna set our debounce play equal to nil, so our debounce is gonna be working. So basically, right, I basically made the general wait time equal to the our delay function. So our delay function is gonna ignore the whole script and it's gonna wait 0.4 seconds before running, right? So now we're gonna do if ray dot hitbox then. And then we're gonna do uh, then we're gonna run this right here, right? And I put else here so you don't get an error and it won't stop. So this per I did the all I did is I did print not found. So if it doesn't find nobody inside the uh, inside our, our ray hitbox, it's just gonna just gonna ignore it and it's gonna print not found. So the script does not get no errors. So keep going, right? So what, all we're gonna do here is our, we're gonna do if hit if uh, ray hitbox dot instance dot parent find first charge humanoid. And so basically gonna find a humanoid and, and v1 equals equals nil. So there's nothing inside the uh the uh the table. There's no first value and the, there's like literally nothing inside the table. We're gonna try we're gonna check if there's nothing inside the table. That's why we remove the uh some the first value inside the table, that'll be the humanoid. Then if combo player, so if uh, so if combo player is equal to one, two, three, four, and five, so if so if it's combo player, then it's, it's of course it's gonna run, then it's gonna print the the number combo. So like uh, if we punch once, it's gonna print combo player one because we're printing combo player because we're making sure that we're, we're changing their walk speed back to uh, we're changing walk speed back to um, 16 and 50 because we want to make sure that we we know what combo we're punching on, right? If we have any errors, so now we're gonna now we're gonna change their speed all the way back to the original speed. So we're gonna make their the hitbox back to uh, we're gonna change their walk speed back to 16. We're gonna change their jump power back to 50, and that's basically how you make your uh, your combat script uh thank you hope you guys like the video hope you guys subscribe and yeah